Stoicism and the Art of Happiness by Donald Robertson. Why would renouncing what we irrationally crave and enduring what we rationally fear be a good way to get on the path towards the good life? Uh, Stoicism is probably one of the most practical philosophies that we've inherited from the ancient Greeks and today we're going to talk about why that is and why you should check out this book. Let's go! Hi and welcome to the book lab, I'm Bjorn and this is the place where we bring you the best book recommendations when it comes to philosophy, psychology, human nature and human potential. And today we are talking about Stoicism and the art of happiness. And throughout my years as a reader and as a human <laughs> in general, I've run into a lot of principles that have raised my baseline happiness. And one of the biggest ones, probably only second to realizing that I just don't give a shit about what people think about me and what I do, which is still work in progress by the way, is the stoic principle of only focusing on what's in our direct control. The weather, death, traffic, other people, the outcome of football games, uh, sickness, international politics, uh, the corona virus. Who knows, right? Uh, if we only fully commit to the principle of only caring about what's in our direct control and being indifferent to what isn't, then there's so much suffering that we could get rid of. There's so much anxiety and frustration that could just go out the door if we fully committed to this stoic principle. This book, Stoicism and the Art of Happiness, it gives a great summary of the main ideas of Stoicism. It goes through the key players and the ev evolution of the philosophy. And it also gives practical uh, exercises for how you can use the Stoic principles in your everyday life. And here are a few notes from my reading. Mindfulness of what is up to us and what is not is one of the main remedies for emotional suffering. In the morning, set your intentions for the day and as you go to bed at night, review your actions. Where did I act virtuously and where did I miss the mark? Where did I sin? Review your actions and evaluate your conduct. Quote, men are not disturbed by things, but by the views of which they take of them. Epictetus. If you are a novice stoic, here are two things that you should start practicing each day. First, to endure what you rationally fear or find adversive and do so with courage and perseverance. Wait a minute, endure what you irrationally fear. What does that mean? Well, I think the key word here is irrationally. I mean, we shouldn't do things we fear because some things we fear, uh, we fear out of good reasons. We shouldn't drop our hands into lava. We shouldn't allow <laughs> super dangerous spiders to climb on our faces. Uh, so the key term here is irrational. What things are you avoiding that would be beneficial for you if you didn't have to avoid going with elevators or uh, standing in a crowded subway? That could stop you from living a good life, right? That would be good to practice uh, so that you could have a more smooth everyday life. Uh, one practical example from my own life is um, I had this adver aversion to public speaking and I went to Toastmasters, which is a speaking club where you could meet other people and practice holding speeches for each other, which now allows me to create videos for you guys. And that's, I think that's a good example for how you can combat um, those aversion and get rid of fears, overcoming them by facing them head on. Two, renounce or abstain from what you rationally crave through discretion and self-discipline. The goal of the sage, this is the stoic ideal, is not to benefit others because that is out of his or her control, right? So instead it is to do his or her best. Like an archer, right? Like an archer firing an arrow. The work is done once you have done your best, whether you hit the target or not. This is a great book. It's very practical, which I like. I especially like all the examples and exercises that you can do. It's both practical exercises and thought experiments. Uh, you will, I guarantee you, you will learn something about yourself. But if you're totally new to Stoicism, I still recommend uh, Irvine's book, A Guide to the Good Life, as the starting point. Uh, that was my introduction to Stoicism and I think still 
to this day, and I read quite a few books on this topic, uh, that is like the best introduction if you come from an everyman perspective, so to say, without any philosophical background. Uh, and I really think you should look into Stoicism. It's uh, probably the philosophy that had the most practical impact on my life. And as I said in the beginning, it has given me mindsets that have raised my baseline happy level, happiness level. Without Stoicism, I would probably be a less content person. So that's more than you can say about most books. And I think that's it for me. Uh, check out Stoicism and the Art of Happiness. And we have more reviews brewing. For instance, we have Gabor Mates in the reign of... In <laughs> In the realm of hungry goats coming up, I've got a new batch of books now. I'll actually give you a sneak peek. I, I don't know much about these books actually, but I picked them up from people. I have a few people that I go to, like, that I trust in their taste of books. And these are some that I picked up from them. This is Ryan, my friend, he said this book really changed his way of looking at life. <laughs> it was John Gray's Straw Dogs, Thoughts on Humans and other animals. The elements of style, that's something completely different that might not be covered here. This one, how to break free of the drama triangle and victim consciousness. This one, I'm listening to an audio, but I got this, it's so pricey, like $770, $70, right? Maps of Meaning by Jordan Peterson. Wittgenstein biography, we got this book, cast, we got the confessions, of Jean-Jacques Rousseau, Rousseau. So good stuff ahead. What principles have you picked up the last couple of years that have had a big impact on your life? I would love to know in the comments. Um, and see you next Thursday for more book, book reviews. Until then, you're not.